BC today. It's February the 8th, which is a Thursday. And Brian Seitel with you again. It's nice to be here um, as we get closer to the end of the week here. We had another nice day in markets today. The Dow closed up 48 points, kind of a flattish day. But we were just sort of flirting all day with this 5,000 level on the S&P. And so I had written a little intro about my memories of the S&P in different periods of time. And of course, I wasn't able to include it because it didn't close above 5,000. But um, we closed two points below 5,000. Um, but, um, you know, with with things basically more, you know, more biases to the upside with things basically fairly good. You have the Fed on hold. Earnings have been good. You know, GDP is in line and coming in you know, just fine. Unemployment's holding in, inflation's pulling back. And so path of least resistance is a little bit melting higher in stocks. You've had 10-year rates drift up a little bit too. They were up three basis points today, closed at uh, 412 on 10s. Um, and um, technically this is the, uh, we're up 13 out of 14 weeks in uh, S&P uh, right now. So that's the longest streak since 1986. And good thing there wasn't much volatility the following October. Um, all joking aside, the market was up in '87 um, after that big sell-off and, and uh, on Black Monday. But um, but but all that to say, markets have, have been acting quite nicely. Vic, Vix, the volatility is still still quite low, and and we're 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 kind of humming along here. Um, there was inflation data out of China today, CPI uh, and PPI. CPI came out for the month of January at 0.3. So a small gain, but year over year, it's down 0.8. So deflation, that's definition there. Uh, PPI is down 2.5% year over year. So it's this continued slowdown in China in the world's second largest economy. Uh, they're dealing with deflation. They're dealing with population uh, decline in numbers, not decline overall. Uh, most things are positive there if, you know, in China every year. Um, as people you know, have more money and are able to do more, more things, more education, all those things, um, better economy. But overall, the population has been declining. It was down 2 million people last year. And so you just have a, a headwind when population is growing like that. You also have an aging population in China. And some of that's playing into this deflationary theme that we're seeing in 24. The um, uh, age of uh, population over 60 is 18% now, but in the next 18 years, that'll pop up to 32%, which will put it above the U.S. from an aging standpoint. And, you know, as we all know, the, your peak earning years tend to start to wane in your later years and um, the economic activity declines, you know, as you get older. Uh, of course, health healthcare costs can go up, but generally speaking, when you have a population that's pulling back a little bit in size and also aging, um, you know, that's not necessarily a recipe for a big tailwind in growth. And what I put in there is the decades over the past 30 years in China have been just so amazing uh, from a growth perspective. It's been one for the ages. And it's not unusual to have growth slow. That happened in the United States in our industrialization period. It happened in Europe. It just, in Europe was first, but it happened over a longer period of time. Technology was different then. And productivity was different, much different, uh, lower meaning. And so now um, the run up and then the slowdown seems to be happening a little faster in, in the modern era. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's, it's frankly natural, um, but uh, they're trying to shift gears and, and bring their economy into more of a consumption-based economy versus an export-led um, paradigm. And that is just having some, uh, you know, taking time and, and we're, we're seeing that in the numbers now. It, it definitely is significant for global GDP over time because they were such a big contributor to it. Um, but I'll leave it there for the day on, on that topic. The um, initial jobless claims were out today at 218 versus 220. It's basically right in line. Employment picture is still very sound. Um, still continued stress with this bank I've mentioned before, uh, New York City Community Bank. Um, more stress in the regional banking sector. This bank is down 60% year to date, unfortunately. Um, it's basically following the playbook of you know what happens to banks when there's a lack of confidence and you get this downward spiral and um, it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. There was a reshuffling in management at the top uh, yesterday. There was, um, you know, reiteration of $83 billion of deposit base and that's stable. You know, if you remember what First Republic went through, it was almost the same comment basically, you know, a week before. So hopefully things turn around. 
uh, wouldn't surprise me if there's some action that comes out of it and um, it'll be chalked up to commercial real estate stress. Although really what it comes down to is lack of confidence and, and frankly, potentially run, run on, on that, that bank. But we'll, we'll see as time goes on. Tomorrow, we have a revision in CPI. Uh, it's a seasonal revision. So I don't know that it'll be hugely market moving, um, but it, it could move the needle here a little bit one way or the other. And uh, we'll have D, uh, Dividend Cafe in your inbox tomorrow, as we always do. Um, and uh, for uh, all of you out there that are football fans, I wish whatever team you're working or, or, or rooting for does well and good luck in the Super Bowl. And with uh, two young daughters that are obsessed with Taylor Swift, I guess I'm rooting for the Chiefs this year. So another AFC West rival for my Chargers. Anyways, that's what I got for you today. It's Thursday. Have a wonderful weekend if I don't speak to you. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.